coming to you from one of the most resourceful, independent, and badass generations of all time. Welcome to the Gen X Brothers Podcast. There's been some shit happening in the news the past week, man. I don't think we can avoid it. We got to talk about it. Well, that's a lot to process. First thing we got on the agenda, first thing that happened almost like immediately after we got off of last week's show on Friday, we were kind of just talking about the Foo Fighters. And then all of a sudden, a couple hours later, it's like Taylor Hawkins fucking dead, man. Yeah, uh, like out of nowhere. Like, you know, the last time a death like that was out of nowhere, like uh, totally unexpected that I could think of is uh, Prince. Yeah. Prince, yeah, maybe even yeah. maybe even David Bowie because remember David Bowie released that album and then he died like a day after. And... Well, no, but we knew he had. I mean, everybody kind of knew he had cancer, so I think that wasn't that unexpected. But this was kind of. I mean, but again, when you're doing drugs and shit, I mean, what the? I was gonna say, did they ever find out uh, Taylor like the actual? I know they said something about there was ten different um, cocktails in his system, but some of them were prescribed. Yeah, I don't think that they got um, the toxicology report back. That that usually takes a few months, not to sell anybody out, uh, and obviously we come from the music world and whether people like to believe it or not, we're old fuddy duddies. We're still somewhat connected because you, your connections kind of told you that uh, they weren't surprised that this was like, before it even came out, you were like, Oh, this was going to be drug related. Right. Yeah. And, and so-and-so had talked to Tommy Lee, his wife. Well, we don't want to say any names, but you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to avoid the part. name. Edit that part out. Anyways, <laughs> so and so talked to so and so who is pretty famous, whose wife is friends with him, and and uh, yeah, they said they, they, they had just uh, got off the phone with him. They talked to him two hours before he died, and and, uh, and just was unexpected. So the 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 theory is whether he got some bad cocaine. I think I don't know if that's come out yet, or whether he was because there's no there's no secret that he had a drug problem, and he even in his own interviews, in the, which I'm going back and reading, he, he would openly say that yes i love my drugs it's just that sometimes i go over oh i overdo it sometimes you know mm, and but okay. you know he did overdose i think back in 2000 or something he had a couple of overdoses and um but i don't think he was a hardcore because obviously he can't be that good of a drummer and just that talented of a dude and 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 be able to, he, he must have known not to like, you know, do it on stage or anything like that. But well, there's some, I mean, you know, this as well as I do, that some addicts are very good at keeping like there's control, there's out of control addicts and there's control addicts, you know, there's yeah, some addicts who are, who are obviously they're able to keep it in check and not be crazy and just kind of uh, let loose every once in a while. But the, you know, just like a casual drinker, I guess, you know, yeah, and it's just, not uncommon for when bands go on tour, like especially in like those other countries to, for them to just sort of split up like that and just kind of, um, you know, one guy goes and does his thing and another guy does, does his thing, you know, in their hotel or whatever. Some guys like to go out and party and have a good time before their show. But from what I understand, I guess Taylor, he had, he called in, uh, having some chest pains or whatever. And, and, and then when the band members came in and found them, they found them on, you know, pretty much dead because uh, oh, they wow. wonder where he's, they haven't heard from him or whatever. Cause they were going to go on stage at night, I guess, apparently. And they had just, you know, they were playing like Lollapalooza, like three different versions of Lollapalooza with all in <laughs> yeah. South America. And then that last concert they did on it before he passed away was like, I think two or three days before. Uh, if, if he said, if he called somebody and said his chest was hurting, yeah, so clearly, he then maybe, I mean, he's an old dude. I mean, we're all not young well, anymore. Yeah. Well, he was 50, which is surprising because he didn't look 50 to me. Like, he was actually, because yeah. you see him in interviews, he's very, like, you know, this thing about Foo Fighters, I'm just starting to really kind of appreciate them more than what I've, you know, kind of did in the past, uh, especially even before he passed away. I started watching some concerts of Foo Fighters, like, damn, these guys are really good live, you know, like the way Dave Grohl is on stage. And, yeah, and, I've always and, loved and, their and, style and... Yeah, like, you know, think, you know, because, you know, when you think of Foo Fighters, you think, okay, they're the safe rock band. And when you think of, oh, I like rock, I like crazy rock. And who do you like? Oh, Foo Fighters, because they're safe and they're, <laughs> yeah. they're well known. It's like, like, even the Grammys was like, we need a rock band. Who are we going to call? Let's call the Foo Fighters. And they're supposed to perform the Grammys, but now they're not going to be on there. But I think with Foo Fighters, they're just a good, I mean, you could say they're safe, but they're a good fucking band. He's a good yeah, musician. Yeah, they're good. They're, there's no question. I mean, especially Dave Grohl. I mean, he's a, you know, he's a metalhead too. He did that metal band back in the day called Probot where you had like Lemmy and Voivod. He's a, he's a self-proclaimed Voivod fanatic, you know, and, and uh, I've always liked him. I just never had their music. And uh, I think I want to go back go and buy some of their vinyl now and, and definitely get into their music more. Well, I don't know if you've heard because uh, uh, I you heard that they had that um, Studio 666. The, the yeah, and I want to go see that movie. It did flop a little bit from what I understand, but I definitely want to see it. From what I understand is based on that movie, 
Dave Grohl wrote a whole metal album through that yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah and, and it came and out the it, day that the, the, the day that Taylor died is when it came out. Yeah, so I listened to it the other day, and I listened to it today some more. It's really fucking good. It's a really good metal album. I don't know. Have you had a chance to hear it? Or? I heard one song. Yeah, I heard of one song. It was like on, on the day that it was released on YouTube. I just heard one song. I'm thinking, oh, this is pretty badass. And because at first I was kind of skeptical, but I was thinking this this might actually be one of the best death metal albums ever recorded. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> if you listen to the whole album, every fucking song is like an homage to a different style of metal. They got one that sounds kind of like a stained, you know, that new metal shit that I'm not really into, but but it still sounded really good. And then one that was like a I could have swore the second song on the on the album sounds just like fucking Tony. It sounds oh, like yeah. one of his blast beats and him singing like from the get go. And I was like, what it was, what? What are they called? Dream, <laughs> dream widow. Right. Yeah. I'm going to definitely yes, get that dream album. Widow. I'll probably hit the record store this weekend and see if I can pick it up. And... It's a really good, I was just listening to, I was like, damn, this is surprisingly good. It, it, it was, every song is different and I'm sure they catered each song maybe to the movie. I think, with, I think with me, I always liked the Foo Fighters as them as people and as musicians, but I just never got into their music. And, and I think it's just because, I just never took the time to really get out there and, and buy it or look at or listen to it. But I do, you know, cause you always hear just the hits or whatever. So now I'm curious, I'm going to go back and get their actual albums and actually listen to the deep cuts and see how good they are. Because, because I always like watching them in interviews. I love Dave Grohl and on his documentaries that he does. Oh yeah. And I love, fucking... and, I, and I love, yeah. Taylor, Taylor Hawkins when he's with him. Cause you notice like it's Dave and Taylor. They're like the face of Foo Fighters. Yeah. Now. They're like brothers. They're like, so they're, and they're so inspiring when you, when you watch them. Cause they're always so hyped up about whatever yeah. the fuck they're doing. <laughs> they they're love... always like, Oh yeah, dude, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And they like, just have that passion for music. And, and, I, and I didn't know Taylor was a good singer until I watched that video of that last concert he did in Argentina before he passed away where and I guess that's a normal thing that Dave Grohl does is where he brings out Taylor to, to sing on the last song he sings a Queen song and then Dave Grohl gets behind the drums and like damn Taylor like owned the stage it's like he should be the front man you know like yeah. the way he's running around stage and his voice is super good and then and also like there's a Foo Fighters concert I watched where they brought this guy up in, from the audience they, they, they call him Kiss Man he's all he plays guitar I guess well, they didn't know he played guitar good but he was like holding up a sign let me come up and play I forgot what the song was. Oh, Monkey yeah, Ranch. Yeah, on Monkey that or something, Ranch. And yeah. they, they, he gets up there on stage and just knows the song right away. And Dave Grohl's like flipping out on stage, like, oh my God. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's looking great. So it's like, like yeah, I, love, I, I like Foo Fighters now. Like, but it's like, oh, for, I mean, it's such Not a like sad I never loss. disliked them. I just like them more. Yeah, it's a sad loss. <laughs> And, and you wonder how Dave is going to go on. Like when you have somebody, I mean, obviously you already lose somebody like Kurt Cobain early on. So you, that's you're the kind thing, of, like, you know, he's gone through now two deaths of like, you know, yeah, you're kind of familiar with that tragedy and, and uh, building up again, but how do you do that? I mean, they've been together since, since Foo Fighters have been together and it's just, man, it's like, that's fucked up. And I'd be curious to find out if they, maybe they found fentanyl in his, in his system. If, Cause that's really hitting, especially here in Oregon is hitting people bad of, I've lost a couple of clients on it and, uh, you know, they, yeah, I mean, it could have just been a combination of, of the drugs and the fact that he's 50 years old, your heart can only take so much. He might've just had a heart attack because of like, not necessarily a drug overdose, well, they're starting to a cut, heart attack because of the drugs, you know, they're starting to cut cocaine, meth and marijuana, even with uh, fentanyl for some reason, it's just killing people left and right. Is it cheaper or something? What's the fucking deal yeah, with something fentanyl? To do with it being, it's yeah, something to do with it being cheaper. And, and it's actually something to do with like, if you're a heroin addict, then you're going to get a really good high and, it's, and you're not going to really die from it because you're, because your tolerance level, but you're, you're going to get that really good high. But if you're not a heroin addict, you're not used to taking it. And then you take some fentanyl in your meth or your speed. You have a good chance that you're not going to make it out alive, you know? Well, okay. Well then, then explain this to me because wasn't fentanyl the thing that they were getting, uh, like opioid addiction back, you know, 10 years ago, or whatever, where everybody was like, yeah. it was the drug companies selling it. Right. Pretty much. And, and, and wasn't sure, fentanyl like... is so fucking expensive <laughs> that people were yeah. going to heroin because fentanyl was so expensive. Yeah, I now think, it's I, cheaper. I think, like I yeah. don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I mean, either and uh, you know, there's a type of fentanyl where if it gets in the air or whatever, it can definitely kill you. Like a, there was a, one really? where a cop, Fuck. yeah, a cop opened up a bag and the fentanyl got into his face, and they had to like do the Narcan can on him and. You know, well, you wouldn't overdose. that be well? Wouldn't that be considered like a toxic sub? Like they shouldn't even be fucking yeah. touching it. Like, yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Like, why are these dealers <laughs> killing their own customer base? That's like, well, I guess McDonald's does the same thing, but <laughs> well, slowly, but not that yeah. fucking. <laughs> and I can imagine. So Dave Grohl, like, what's he going to do with Foo Fighters now? Obviously, he's going to. I'm sure he'll get another drummer, but it's going to take some time. I think. I think what he'll do is he'll since he plays drums and he can sing really well, he might do a few shows like that just in a, in honor of uh, of his friend and. And then eventually, I think at some point they're going to probably 
get back out there and, you know, find a, another drummer. And- well, I mean, with Dave, I mean, he's the type of person that just had, this is his passion. So he has to continue to write, but at some point you say to yourself, fuck man, I'm done. I'm, I'm, you know, I don't know. Maybe he, he might, this might be the nail in the coffin that just kind of fucking tells him it's time to retire. But I don't know. If anything, he'll, if he doesn't do the Foo Fighters again, he'll, he'll be doing something to the music. I'm sure because the dude loves music too much. And, he loves creating and he's got this. And obviously, and, with this metal album, he wrote all the music. Yeah, I think he writes the majority of the music for Foo Fighters, from what I understand, too. I think he's pretty much the, the main guy, writer for that. You know, with, you know, Pat Smear, you know, he's another interesting character. He, he kind of like makes me like the Foo Fighters a little bit when I watch him on stage because he's such a weird guy. Like, he's always got that weird smile on his face. And he looks he just like looks a like serial a psycho. killer. I mean, yeah, he looks like a serial killer, like, like a psycho. <laughs> he's just like, <laughs> like the kind of guy that you meet him off stage, you'll just like do some wacky shit to you or something. <laughs> yeah, like there's like, something don't... there's something hidden behind yeah. his eyes, man. Yeah, like <laughs> don't fall asleep go around Pat Smear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But keep, a, keep one eye open when you're sleeping next to him, that dude. When, now, obviously, that dude. everybody says this, hey, you know, our hearts go out with Taylor and the family and, and for Dave Grohl and all, and everybody that knew him and shit. And it's just weird when you know, like, obviously we didn't know him. We didn't fucking know who he was. He's a, a, to us, he's a fictional character. But when you let somebody into your life, when you love their music and you listen to it all the time and it, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a weird thing, you know? Well, yeah, you know, Taylor, from what I understand too, a lot of people are speaking out of you know, that met him in person, even fans who, he was just that kind of, he was a fan himself. He was like a, he would just like, you know, you could talk about Kiss and Iron Maiden and, and all the metal bands and all the rock bands and, and to the guy. And he's just he's just as much as a freak about that stuff as the fans. And there's been fans that would say that, you know, they'd see him at a concert, you know, rocking out with the in the audience of, of another band. And, and it's just like, you know, he's, you could tell he's super enjoying himself. And, you know, and did you see the one with that little girl that pl- played drums in front of his hotel room like the night before? Because there was a show that it was canceled because of weather. And this little girl wanted to meet him, so she set up her own drum set and uh, outside of his hotel and started playing. And I guess he came down. But this happened the night before he passed away, which has got to be like somewhat yeah. fucked up for her because it's like I don't know. It's like a weird spotlight on on a kid to be have your hero like that and then die the next day and shit. You know, that's got to be some heavy shit. Did you see Miley Cyrus? She actually ended up doing the show in place of the Foo Fighters the night that he died because that was, oh, that no, was the night no. they were, cause they were supposed to play that night and then obviously he died and Miley Cyrus had to fly in there and, and, and pretty much step in and do the show. And she did a big tribute of him and she even cried saying that she had just got off the phone with him like the day before and she was looking to hang out with him cause she was on her way over there anyway. And she was just sad that she didn't get to hang out with him one more time. Cause I guess they were like really good friends too. And, you know, she did a good job. She did a she did a good tribute. She sometimes annoys me, but she's actually good when she's <laughs> yeah, when she's good, same. she's good. But when she's annoying, she's it could be a, she's annoying. Yeah. <laughs> but very, she's also very good. Much she's so, talented. <laughs> yeah. But of course, no celebrity can die without having some kind of connection to fucking John Stamos for some reason. Oh yeah, what, what's up with that again? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess John Stamos tweeted like his last text message from uh, from Taylor, and it said something like, "We got to get. Uh, we've yet to fully have a hang." got to put a shit together before we die. So, you oh, know. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I just see that in the news. <laughs> but it just seems like every time somebody dies, for some reason, John Stamos is yeah. like the last person they talk to. Uh, Why is almost, that? It's kind of a cryptic, <laughs> cryptic uh, message there before we die. And it's like, oh, shit. Then he dies. I mean, everybody knows John Stamos, who's famous. Everybody loves John Stamos. I guess well, at least he died at 50, not 27. Like, you know, <laughs> not, not part of the 27 club. <laughs> Your body can only handle so much. Let's just put it that way. When you're doing drugs, you're playing drums, you're fucking constantly putting your body through hell. But I think being, I think him being playing drums is probably what kept him going for his, doing the drugs that he did. And if he was that hard, like I said, I have no idea what his history of drug use was. I just know, like, from those interviews I read that were, he was just talking about how he loves his drugs and he knows he needs to quit, but he, and at times he takes it too serious, you know, especially at the time he's overdosed. So, yeah, you're taking it too serious, dude. <laughs> <It's> like, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, uh, obviously, people, uh, you know, I don't have any issue with people doing drugs if they can handle it and they do it their own way and they don't disturb other people. There's nothing wrong with that for recreational drug use. I've got nothing against that. I only think I have against drug use is when they're fucking annoying as shit and they're bugging me. That's the only time I care, but in their own personal life, or, you know, as long as it's safe or whatever and, you know, but eventually it catches up with you. It, I'm just glad I quit, you know, before the all fentanyl shit started getting into stuff. Cause I would have probably got a bad batch of something. I would have done some cocaine in someone's so? house and yeah, probably because <laughs> I was, you know, you put a few beers in me and somebody puts out a line of something. I'm going to do it just because my inhibitions <laughs> are down and, 
You were actually that bad. I didn't know you were actually that bad with yeah, drugs. Yeah. I knew you were that bad with alcohol. It was alcohol always more, but there was times, yeah, there's times where I just, you know, and I didn't, wouldn't have done drugs if it wasn't for the alcohol. I, I think, I think I wouldn't have, you know, like I said, it, it, it's just being at a certain place at, at a certain time, you know, and just having your inhibitions down. Cause I was always afraid of drugs or putting something in my nose or smoking yeah. it or something, you know, and, and Me too. But, but when I was at a party and somebody put out some speed and tried it and liked it a little bit too much and. <laughs> It did but help even me then, you're always so fucking mellow. I can't see you. Yeah. I mean, I've seen you get angry. I've seen you get crazy a little bit, but nothing like, you know, so like, there were times, like what you would think of a speed Yeah, there something. were times when I wasn't drinking a whole lot, and it was because I was doing a lot of speed. I wasn't doing a lot, but you remember how skinny I got kind of? You know, yeah. I was always playing it off to people like, oh, I just drink a lot of coffee because I had to hide that stuff. And, and uh, But um, it helped me stop drinking, so everyone was thinking like, oh, wow, he's he's not drinking, and he's uh, looking all fit. And you know, and, it's like now I was doing some speed, you know, a lot of times, you know, Gabriel, because, you know, Gabriel did a lot, you know, and I would do it with oh, him yeah. every now and then. So, but I would only do it like if he offered it, like I wasn't like, hey, dude, hit, can you, can you hook me up or whatever like that? It was more or less if I'm, you know, we lived together, obviously. Even the, did you pay for it or were you just like, oh, if no, it's laying around, it's free. Yeah, there was, it got to a point where there was like, especially in a few years before I moved up here, it got to a point where I started paying for it every now and then, but I would only buy like a, a 20 here and there. Um, off of certain people and, and it was just because most of the time like if I needed to get sobered up you know after drinking all night if it was available then yeah like you know especially when I was living with with, with them as, as roommates you know it'd be like hey can you sell me like a dub you know I need to go to work you know <laughs> and then uh, damn Eric you're a low life motherfucker man yeah fucking, low life right <laughs> fucking crackhead yeah, fuck sorry, you man I, I let you into my home motherfucker <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, yeah you know yeah it was, around my kids and shit being all yeah. fucking drugged up no just yeah kidding. yeah you know I did a lot of shit that I just <laughs> you know I, I wish I could take it all back but you know you can't fix the past you can only you know shape today yeah Shape today as long as you're still alive to enjoy life and the right way, yeah. then who gives a shit what yeah. you did in the past? You know, yeah, that's all that matters. That's part of an addict does. You know, an addict is is good at hiding shit and lying, and that's part of like the, that's the general DNA makeup of an addict is to hide, lie, steal, you know, whatever they need to do. I sold a lot of money off Christine to, or off my ex wife just to. Um, feed my habit of alcohol mostly, and then sometimes drugs. You know. So then, okay. So then, let's if we're going to define that as saying, "Hey, somebody, obviously, you you need to have your fix." So somebody like Taylor Hawkins, who clearly was open about his drug use, he wasn't hiding it. He's uh, yeah, would that be somebody who's just considered recreational? Yeah, someone who probably just he just enjoyed it, and and he he obviously had a good life. He's not like. You know, someone who kind of is just getting by, someone like me at that time living paycheck to paycheck, I shouldn't be spending money on alcohol and drugs, you know? <laughs> and then, well, no, but you were reckless. I mean, he wasn't, when you were when you were out of control, you kept going until it, it got out of control. Yeah, Taylor, if he if, if he wasn't reckless, he just had a good, good control of it. And who knows, like, we don't know, like, you know, how he was with his band members. Maybe he was showing up late at times. And, you know, I'm sure he went through some drama with, with some of his use in the past. Because, again, he did overdose sets. Uh, you know, I forgot what year it was, but they, cause I mean, I've uh, known alcoholics where they would drink at work. They would, you know, but they were functional functioning alcoholics and yeah. they weren't mean people. They were just, you could smell alcohol in their breath all day long or, you know, they were drinking from there, but they weren't like crazy. They were just, I mean, that's functional at the time. I think my biggest thing about wanting to quit and needing to quit, but I kept telling myself, well, you know, you can actually control it. You can, and that's just part of part of an addict lying to yourself. Cause not only are you lying to people, you lie to yourself when you say, well, I can control it. You know, as long as I just drink this and that, or as long as nobody knows I'm doing this or that, then then I'll be okay. But, you know, then all of a sudden every problem you have is related to the actual alcohol or the drug. You know, you got to just wake up and say, okay, I just had this happen today. And why did it happen? Well, because look what you did today. <laughs> you know, like you freaking got, you got drunk or you got high or you this or that. You didn't get this done or you, or you got in this bit of trouble because of that. And, and that's when you got to wake up and say, yeah, I guess I do have a problem. And, you know. And so at that point, is that when you have somebody like Will Smith come up and smack you for oh, talking shit. shit to you? <laughs> Remember that. <laughs> <laughs>